time to build this bad boy. Right guys, finally time to um, crack this one open. Super excited. We all love a build day or a build couple of days. But this thing, as I'm guessing the majority of you guys will know, this is Tamir Royalty. Um, the Egress is just one of the super nicest kits Tamir ever did. Um, obviously this is the 2013 Riri -Ri, um, where they made a few upgrades as well which is good. Um, I believe the original came out in 89, 1989 I'm pretty sure. Um, so in this video the idea is to get it fully built. So normally I'd be doing this shell that's in the kit completely box art um, and I've got some MCI reproduction decals to change a couple of decals over. Um, but I've got this shell coming which a few of you have seen before. So I'm actually going to build the car to sort of suit that more modern body shell. So my thinking behind this was, normally I would just build this kit 100% box art uh, and then run it. But as I say, I want, with that new shell, I'm going to put some um, of the white TRF dished wheels on rally block tyres. I'm also, in a different video when the shell arrives, I'm going to take the high caps off and put the Tamiya TRF big bars on to run it with that um, that body shell on and we'll put some Tamiya TRF decals on it. So that's where this is heading and then once I've done that and I've done a few batteries through it and what have you, then we'll go back and we'll do the the, the, the shell in the box which is you know 100% box art and we'll make it look identical to the original which is going to be super cool. Um, I've also got the blue um, turnbuckle ends for it now. The, if you don't know, the 2013 Egress came with the um, black ones, but you really have to have the blue ones. So these are original Egress ones, which I was um, given by, shout out to Roy for sending me these, much appreciated. So we'll fit them in this build. Uh, and I also was so lucky to get, now the, how do I explain this? The front shock angle, was one of the biggest changes from the original to the Riri. Um, basically, the original shocks, if you this is the front of a car, were sat at a really kind of, not vertical, but not far off. Whereas on the Riri, they took a couple of brackets off of it and they, it splayed the front shocks out. Um, that is an actual, that's an upgrade. Um, but I want this to be, to look as close to the original as I can. So I was super lucky to find these parts. I can't remember, they're called something like B8 and B9. Um, it's a left and right handed bracket, which I'm pretty, well I'm hoping this is just gonna bolt on to the 2013 model, which will give me, take my shocks from this angle to that angle, and it'll just make it look, as I say, like the original. So that's two, and I plan to do that in this video. I'm also doing something slightly different. Normally I just build these, and then in a later video I'll do the electrics, and then in a later video I'll do a running video. But because we're building the chassis up now, um, I'm going to fit the electrics as we as we go, basically as the manual says. So I'm actually going box art on the electrics as well, which is super cool. What I mean by box art is, on the side of one of the boxes is a picture of um, this chassis and the electrics that Tammy are fitted in it. So it just happens to be the super stock BZ motor, which I have. 23 turn motor, great motor, and the BZ is the buggy motor. So we're fitting that. Um, and just by luck more than anything, I, I've also got a Tamiya TEU 302 BK speed controller. These are getting a little bit harder to find now, um, but I actually got this set in the hot shot, so it was just by pure luck. So I kind of purposely kept this set up for this car. I was really planning to go brushless in this and put the Tamiya 10.5 in with the TBLO2 with a fan, but I've decided to run this with this setup and then the 10.5 combo can go in the um, DB01 Durga. That's that's the plan now. Um, so we'll have to dig some radio gear out. I'm gonna I've got two sets of Tactic Radio 2.4 gig, which are both antennaless receivers, which I really like using. Now, one's a chunky receiver and one's not, so I think this isn't too bad for space, so I think I'm gonna fit the, the chunky tactic receiver in this kit. Um, so that's pretty much it, that's enough babble. Let's get this up. Oh, one other thing as well, just to, to go back to the shocks. I'll leave all these shocks unbuilt, the high caps that are in this kit, because I have 
another new set of high caps which are already built and because I'm I'm only gonna put the high caps on for this video um, I'll use those ones and then in the next video when the body shell arrives we'll build the TRF blue uh, big bore shocks up and we'll get them fitted to this chassis because this stance has to be really correct so there'll be definitely spacers in the shocks and I don't want to I don't want to do all that with the high caps we'll get the stance correct with the TRF, the TRF big bars and then I can copy the length of those shocks and build these up as brand new put the spacers in them to, to match the TRF ones and then it's just a straight swap over once I'm done with it in this format and then we can make it look like the original or the, the proper box art egress right let's get cracking so as always let's pay homage to the box art of the egress <laughs> it's just one of the best out there it's it's for me the um uh, uh, for me my my two favorite boxes are the egress and the avante and obviously you'll see the inside of it now of how it's packaged it's um it's second to none it really is superb an interesting fact don't know if you're interested the actual 2013 box art is um the same as the original um so the shocks are the correct angles the b i'm gonna i'm, I'm calling them b seven and eight it could be eight and nine but i'm sure someone in comments will um correct me but yeah as you can see that's the bracket that's these things and also the blue turnbuckle ends um, as i say this kit comes with black ones so i thought that was a really cool thing just to sort of have the original picture obviously a, a little bit of the artwork changed here i think the original and i could be wrong had a picture of the chassis most box arts do but um, i could be wrong on that so this is the cool bits of the electrics I'm using. Very, very cool speedo. And as I said, super stock BZ motor. We all know what that is. The blue turnbuckles, used but in absolutely tip top condition. And then these are these brackets. Let's see if we can get them in camera. As I say, left and right, hand sand, hand, left and right sided. There should actually be another little metal piece for each of them, like a spacer, which I don't have. So I'm not 100% sure in this video we'll be able to fit them, but we won't know that until we get to that stage on the build. And then a first look in the box, and that's why, to me, this and the Avanta is just the best looking kit box out there. Just the way it's packaged is just superb. So obviously in this section with the high cap dampers, we've got some gearing, we've got a stunning um, full carbon chassis, top and lower deck. Um, these carbon reinforced plates, alloy hexes, which obviously differed from the original, and then these fully um, upgraded um, left and right upgrade, uh, upright, sorry, which was um, the weak point of the Avanta. And I think they went through three different variants of the old alloy um, until the Vanquish, where they'd really beefed it up. But in 2000, oh, let me get my years right. I think in 2011, when the Riri Avanta came out, it came with these uprights, and these are obviously very solid. Um, center section, obviously we've got the body shells and under train there, decals, gorgeous e egress tires. Um, this box, drive shafts, motor mount, motor plate, carbon um, front and back shock towers. This kit's fully ball raced, as you would expect. Also gives you an option in this kit of um, the Avante comes with um, a third differential, a center diff, where the Egress didn't. It comes with um, a one-way, what would you call it? It's not a diff, a one-way center section. So um, if you build it like that, under power it's four-wheel drive, but you come off the power, then the, the, the front wheel's free wheel, basically. So obviously that's more if you're racing it or not. Um, for what I'm doing, we'll be we won't be going and using the one where we'll um, we'll fix that um, solid. So we're just running off the two normal diffs and we'll have full braking. Um, but that's something we can also play about in the future, which would be pretty cool to see how the car feels with both setups. So enough talk. Let's get it out and let's get it set up, and we're ready to start. So obviously we've got the manual. I've got these two parts out, which, I'm, as I say, I'll, I'll just I'll cut into these as and when we need them. Stuff like the shocks and what have you are not going to be getting used. Um, I've dug out all the plastic pieces and taken them out of the bags. Um, there's not a great deal of plastic on this. There's a lot of carbon and metal, which is awesome. Um, all these little bags here are all the different size balls for the um, ball differentials. Um, we've got 
um, standard Tamiya anti-wear grease. We've got the special ball diff grease and we've got the standard ceramic grease to use. Bag of bearings. So, oh, there's a pinion. It comes with a 22, 22 tooth pinion as well, which, as I say, will just make this sort of standard to the instructions. So, um, yeah, let's get to the manual opened and let's uh, make a start. So, first stage is our um, get the um, align motor mount out. That gets bolted to one of the gearbox housings. Then, straight away, we're into the motor. So, we'll get the BZ motor out, the motor plate, and then that all gets mounted to this section. So, let's get that built up. Okay, that's stage one. Well, actually, stage one and two on the instructions. So, as I said, bolted the large alloy mount to this gearbox housing, then put the um, adjustable motor plate on, onto the motor with the kit 22 tooth pinion. Um, obviously it's not set up, you just nip it up so the motor's not moving, but we'll, we'll set this once the, the other gearing's in. So that's that stage complete. So just looking at the instructions now, stage three, we're gonna have to get one of the gorgeous pieces of um, carbon the lower chassis out and then the part we've just done we're going to bolt down to the um, chassis so let's get that done and that's stage three complete look at that chassis look at that carbon is that not a thing of beauty it's gorgeous so all we've done is use the three uh, metal brackets hex on one end that fits into the plastic and then that uh, self taps down with those three. And on that stage, we also put this metal post in, which I presume will be for the carbon top deck, I guess. So that's that stage complete. Um, next up on the instructions is the front gearbox housings. Um, I'm gonna start fitting a few bearings and then um, a, one of the shafts with the bevel gear on. So let's get stage four and five done. So I thought I'd just show you this before I put the um, other side on. So we've got a um, small tummy bearing in this plastic bit, bigger one in this bracket which is now screwed down, and then the front propeller, propeller shaft has gone in um, with the bevel gear. So that's on two um, bearings right now. And then next stage is to seal that up. So let's get that done. Right, that's it. It's complete up to section six. So we've um, put the two um, other sh top deck spacers on, and the um, front gearbox is now bolted down. But there's there's nothing else in it. The uh, if you wiggle it around, the prop shaft will fall out. So you just got to be careful. So there's nothing in it. Um, so that's as far as we can go with that stage. Now stages um, seven. Well, there's a seven A and seven B, which is making the front and rear ball diffs up. So the first one is seven, which is the rear, where we've got to make up, um, and then followed by the um, the front, and then on section A, it's just telling you how to adjust them, um, which will take us time on, um, and then that takes us to nine, where we start putting it in. So what I'll do is I'll I'll get up to section nine, and we'll get these diffs because it's. It's not complicated, but you've got to make sure you build these correctly and everything's in there and it's all greased up correctly. So um, let's bat on. Right, that's the two diffs made. There's a fair bit of work in that. There really is. You've got to really take your time um, on the adjustment side of it. I've gone with the sort of standard um, manual settings, but um, Neil on the group did tell me that he um, he was running his with a 10.5 and uh, I think it was um, slipping but um, they, they feel great but yeah there's a lot of work in there so if I can show you the process here so obviously you've got your normal um, diff plates which you use the um, ball diff grease so that's that stage and then obviously then you've got to put your eight large balls in um, two bearings and then you have to make this section up here. Now that is pretty involved. It's that bolt, a washer goes down, and then with anti-wear grease, you're using, you're putting in the tiny little bearings, actual balls around the washer, and then you've got to bring the second washer down, and then it ends up like that. It actually, 
when I looked at the instructions, I thought it would probably be a little bit more difficult than it actually was, but the, the grease holds everything in place. And then, because um, I kind of thought, well, put any pressure on that top plate, those balls are going to sort of come out. But they actually locate in um, inside one of the, the diff housings. So you can make sure that all, I think it's eight small ball bearings are there. So that's, I'm glad that's done. So next stage now is, what's that, number nine, where we're going to start putting some bearings in some of the rear gears. Um, so we'll fit these and then we put the um, rear cover gearbox cover on and then same again on step 10 which is the front gears in with the bearings and then the main um, front uh, gearbox cover on so we'll get 9 and 10 completed now just thought I'd show you that just before we put the um, gear cover on which is this um, so that's the um, rear differential in place without the cups and that centre gear section that we made up with two bearings um, and then this just sits like that, perfect fit with um, three screws. So we'll get those three screws in, and then I believe it's exactly yeah, exactly the same process, but on the front end. And that's the front gearbox done. Again, very straightforward. I wonder if I can hold it this way and turn the uh, prop shaft so you can see it all greased up. Um, that's held in with a temporary pin. Um, I don't know if you can see this, that's a bit of black tape which is just holding up that pinning, um, which I guess you remove at a later date. So all we've got to do now is mount front cover, four screws in that, and that's the kind of gearbox is basically done. So let's get those four bolts in and see what's next. Okay, we're on stage 11, which is choice time. So you either go for option one, which is the um, torque splitter, but it's also one way. Um, maybe that's what, I, I'm not really up on what that is, but obviously with it being having that one way bearing in, it means that when you come off the power, um, the front wheels are gonna be freewheeling, and that also means when you hit brake, your fronts will not be braking. Um, and then the option two is with it with the, the center completely locked so it's a completely different process so i'm as i say I've, I've looked on the forums and i've seen this question being asked a lot um and I, for what i'm doing for the kind of running i'm doing i'm going with option two locked so that's pretty much that so that's your your propeller shaft um, there's a bearing on the end, a bearing in the middle, and just the whole propeller shaft section is completely locked to that spur gear, um, and that's it. So I'm happy with that, and and also at a later date because it's a different shaft, and obviously the bearings and that, we can actually make this unit up or make like half of it up and swap it over one day when we're doing some running tests, which will be quite interesting. But I think for now to give me full break. Um, I think I'll be more comfortable using this one. So, as I say, I've got that built up. So the next stage now is to fit that spur gear and also with the um, full propeller shaft and get that greased up with um, anti-wear grease. So, um, oh, actually, sorry, just next step. So as soon as I've got that prop shaft in position, it's a case of um, doing the pinion to spur mesh and get that correct. So let's get that stage done. Right, so that's a prop shaft in with anti wear grease either end. Um, there's a gear missing. I thought the gearbox would have been finished, but in, in actual fact, it's not. The the bevel gear here doesn't go in yet. So what I've done is I've greased all these gears up, greased the bevel up. So this is this spurs are, are just a bit loose at the moment, but I've done the correct um, pinion to spur gear meshing. So that's good, but because it's all grease, I can't touch it now until we actually drop that final gear in. But that's not on the instructions just yet. So next stage is to um, assemble the rear anti-roll bar, swear bar, and get it fitted to the um, carbon top deck. And then once we have that in place, then we can get the carbon top deck bolted to the main chassis and then we can um, do this final gear assembly um, and then the, the big large motor cover goes on and then that's a whole
drivetrain assembly done. So uh, yeah, let's get it to that stage. Right, so as I said earlier, we assembled the rear sway bar mechanism, which bolts in between the top deck and this, this bracket here. And then we've attached the carbon top deck on, and that's now bolted down, not fully at the back. There's four screws here, and then there's three that go into the metal stanchions. But that's, uh, that's really starting to take shape now. Looks absolutely gorgeous as well. So next stage, um, as I said, is now just to get the rear cover on and fit that extra, the gear that drives the whole system. So we'll get that in, we'll get it greased up and we'll get that bolted down and then that's the whole sort of drive chain done. And that's that chassis part finished. Really enjoyed getting it to this stage. Really, really enjoyed it. It's, um, you can tell it's kind of high end. It's, it's not a grasshopper if you know what I mean. But that's the, um, the whole cover in place and bolted down correctly. So everything's gearbox wise is sealed now. Um, it's all closed, just waiting for the drive cups to go in. Now I believe on the instructions the next stage is going to be assembling the uh, or start assembling the rear arms. So um, yeah, that's been pretty cool so far. I've, uh, I've really enjoyed that. Love seeing carbon. There's done a lot of metal parts on this as well. I should have mentioned when I was building it to this stage how many metal parts were on but um, yeah there's a lot anyhow let's bang on right so that's the rear arms made up two um, ball cup joints just they just snap in with pliers really free um, and then two of these bolted at either side so I've done both sets of them so the next thing to do now is to actually I'm just looking at the instructions yeah section 16 is actually mounting these arms onto the chassis so uh, let's crack on right so that's um stage 17 completed so we've got the the arms on now uh, and it's connected with the sway bar um there's another carbon plate that's this small plate here that's just a reinforcing plate and then there's this fancy l-shaped metal bracket that holds that front arm down and just tighten that up um the rear is quite tricky if i'm honest but i knew this from the avanta um, let's see, this this section here, from where my thumb is to this um, ball joint, there's a big screw that goes all the way through. But because you've got the top carbon deck here, you've just got to put the screw through and sort of add bits onto it as you go until the very last one, which is, can't see it, is that spacer there, and that's got to go in dead straight. Um, so it's a little bit tricky actually. I got the first one in first time, but on the right hand side one, it uh, it made me work for it. And then tighten it all up, connect your um, sway bars joints, and that is it. And that looks pretty, that's looking pretty cool now. So, um, next stage is, um, what step are we on? Step 18, which is to make the um, rear drive shafts up and then mount them all into the cup so I'll mount those off camera now or I'll make those off camera um, and we've also I'll show you the step so this is what we've got to do next and then after that we've got to make a turnbuckle up um, and then that's sort of the final connection of the rear end so it'll be time to get the blue turnbuckles out and we'll see if they're going to be okay or not fingers crossed okay so you make the drive shafts up yourself um, that silver grease you can see there is anti-wear um, it's quite cool making that drive shaft up it's made from one two three four f there's five pieces in there believe in in not including a grub screw um, but you get a load of grease in there um, and there's a certain way it all goes together and then you just tighten the grub screw up at the end and that keeps it all in place I've just been getting the grease around there. So that was the first stage and then the next step which I've done on the other side is actually fit it. So you've got your rear cup, you put this screw through with the um, turnbuckle head, whatever you call it. Um, so the drive shafts in, two bearings, a bearing either side of this cup and then you get these nice um, hexes in the kit, alloy hexes. Um, push it through and tighten it up and that's that section done so I will build the other side up next 
and then as I say um, we'll see if the blue turnbuckle ends we've got will all fit and we can get the right lengths and what have you and then it's just a case of putting if, if that turnbuckle works then it's just a case of um, putting the, the cups in and making the connection and that's pretty much the back end done and that's that back end all on and um, I can't. I know it's giddy, but I can't tell you how happy I, how happy I am to have the original um, blue turnbuckle ends on. That just makes all the difference. It's one of those things. If you, if you didn't know the original egress, and these were black, it's fine. You just you know. But if you know the original, then you know it's um, blue, and it to me it makes all the difference. And to have a set of originals as well is awesome. Um, these were also fitted on the um, Terra Scorcher as well. And I've said it on a few videos, but if you need a set of these, if you jump on eBay and look at the um, Tamiya Super Clod Buster Part 3 F, I believe. I'm pretty sure it's Part 3 F. Um, that has these turnbuckle ends on as well, which I believe are identical, I think. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty certain about that. Um, but obviously it depends if there is any on eBay. So that's all super smooth, all doing what it should. Now we can feel the diff through the hexes, which feels okay, I guess. And we can just about spin the motor, just. But we probably need the wheels on to do that properly. Um, so, looking at the instructions, we're on step 20 now. So we've got to dig out the rear carbon shock tower, fit that. And then we're going to the front and we're going to make this up, whatever this is, um, which will then bolt to the front. And then, dun, 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 it's the front arms. Now, obviously, this is a bit I need to figure out now whether I'm going to be able to put those brackets on or not. Because that's the standard low amount for the shock. But instead of the ball joint that goes there, I think we're going to have to see if we've got some nuts. Let me get this right. Yeah, the nut will fasten the little plates down to that, and then the ball joint goes onto the end of the plate. So I'm not 100% sure if we're going to be able to do that yet, but we'll uh, let's get there first. So as I say, let's get that shock tower on, build this unit up, fit it, and then we'll get to lower arms and um, see what we can do. Right, a couple of things to show you. So um, the cabin rear shock tower is now on. We've made this. Oops, sorry. We've made this plastic section up, and that's now sat in with these two um, metal. Just not. Does that need squeezing down a little bit? Is that raised? No, it's fine. Um, so that's that bit done. Um, I've built the two front turnbuckles up. These go together slightly different because you snap this one in here in place, and they're the correct length. So I'm chuffed about that. But what I'm mega chuffed about is. I put the front, the original front lower suspension mounts on the arms. So basically, let me get this on camera. So where that that screw head there is, that on the rear is a ball joint, and it's up there. Um, but what I have to do, I've just put a screw and a nut to hold this metal plate on, and then I dug through my little store of goodies to find another short screw. And, um, and a ball joint to fix on there. So I've got both of those done now. Now, I'm not gonna know right till the end if this is gonna work or not, or indeed if this is correct. It looks correct to me, because these are original arms, I know they're re-molded, -re -re but the, the shape is all the same, so this metal bracket fits perfectly. Um, I'm not 100% sure that's gonna be the correct ball size, for it but we won't know as I say until the end but that gives you the idea of how the this 2013 differed from the original so obviously if that was that screw head there was the ball joint that's where your your bottom of your front shot goes and then over like that whereas now it's right down here so it gives you a much steeper angle if it was there it'd go like that this one it goes more vertical so so far so good um, right, let's see what's next. So we've done stage 22. So we're on 23 now. So it's just a case of the drive cups are going in and get the actual arms on with these little bolts and circlips. And then got to build the front drive shafts up. 
and all the arms. Right, right, let's make a start on all that. Right, I thought I'd just jump back on because that is so tricky, it is unreal. So the arms, that's going to be the best way to show you that. The each arm, there's there's a bolt that goes through and then a circlip and a bolt this side and a circlip. And if you can imagine having to get these inner circlips on, and you obviously got to do it four times. That is tricky. Um, it took me, I lost one circlip out of the, the four, so it took me five attempts to get it. But um, yeah, I found that really tricky. Anyway, they're on, so anyway, I'll bat on. Right, that's the front units made up. They look very, very cool. But there's a lot of work in that, I didn't expect that. Um, and there's a lot of, well, there's a fair bit of thread locking. There's this little screw here, which is probably not zooming in on. Uh, that's got to be thread locked, and that acts as a buffer, like a stopper that hits on it. So you've got to make sure you get that in the right place. Um, and there's a little space that you've got to get in there, which is a bit tricky. Um, those two, sorry, these two bolts are um, thread locked. I'll have to wipe that away. I can see a bit of that coming through. Um, but anyway, they're all in place and tightened. Obviously, that thread lock will take a little bit of time, but there's no pressure on it now. So that's those. Um, so the next stage now, we're on 25. Um, so yeah, it's just a case of get, getting the arms on. Anti-wear grease on the end, end of the um, drive shafts, get them in place, get that bolted down with two screws. And then we can get the front turnbuckles on with this metal plate, which um, also acts as the front um, body mount. Um, yeah, we're getting there now. I'm getting excited. Right, that's the front end on. Again, quite involved. Um, so with the front body mount, body shell mounts on, which these two bolt straight through into the gearbox, which holds your turnbuckle on, um, and then obviously just connected it to the uprights, um, and that's all on. So we've obviously got up and down movement, and we've also got our steering. And you can feel the diffs now. Um, and that's all greased up and it's also um, thread locked here so there's quite a, there's a fair bit of thread lock on that front end now just while I'm here I remember somebody on our group did a really cool video about them a mod on this section because I'm probably talking rubbish here because I'm gonna have to look it up but I think the the design of this how this is here that limits your travel that's stopping and I believe it's stopping on that because of that screw head now I'm not too sure if I'm gonna do that mod I need I need to remember what it is but we'll build it up but I'm just sort of making you aware that might be something we we'll revisit um, but I will have to find out who did that it was about a month ago maybe a bit longer um, and see if we need to do that but um, yeah that's that's awesome I'm very very happy with that now so next up is what we got so we've done section 25 so section 26 that one dead straight forward front bumper front stabilizer and then fit that bumper on with the front carbon tower and then we've just got the steering to sort so steering on put that on and then we're going to bypass the shocks because i have them made up already so we can go right to this stage we can jump to what number 33 um, and fit the front and back shocks, which I'm desperate to do. So let's get cracking with this bit. Right, so I see bumper on with the sway bar, and the, the sway bar just tucks into the um, front arms like that. Bumper screwed down, so, and the um, front shock towers on. So, um, next up is the steering which is all fully ball race which is really cool so we'll make all this section up now and get it on and that's that's actually once the steering's on then i can go find those shocks and fit the high caps that i've got which uh it's going to be really cool i'm just wondering if this is the same as the avante black racing steering system um which really sharpened the steering up apparently on the avante i wonder if it's the same Anyway, let's get it fitted. Right, and that's the steering on, and I cannot tell you how smooth that is. 
That is ridiculous. There's um, there's eight bearings across there, which is you know what two of you can see and then two underneath and then the spacers. I'm pretty sure this is the Avante racing, the Avante black racing hop up that you can do for a standard Avante. But wow, zero play. Zero play. That is ridiculous. I'm very, very impressed with that. I knew it was going to be smooth, but I didn't expect it to be as good as that. Anyway, the uh, the towing looks terrible, but uh, we won't know that until the shocks are on and we get the ride height sorted and things like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go dig out those high caps that I've got made already. Um, and we'll get back into the box and we'll get the um, rear wing, my, ring, wing mount assembly done because the car is almost uh, there's uh, shocks to go on and then the rear wing mount and that's the car finished and obviously then we've got to do the electrics but um, anyway let's get those shocks on and make sure this front end's going to work boom look at that now that is a thing of beauty my friends so we'll start with back end so Obviously the wing mount is also the what holds the top of the rear shocks on. So they're they're in place. These high caps, although they're uh, they're not new, they're light new, they're absolutely awesome condition. Um they're full of oil as well. So I don't have to touch them. Super, super smooth. Can't tell you actually how nice that feels. But this is a bit I like. Front end, look at the angle of those front shocks now. That's totally correct to the original. That is absolutely awesome. So chuffed. That was a lot easier than I thought. I thought I was going to have problems. But saying all that, I've not um, put the wheels and tyres on yet. So obviously with, with the stance and stuff, we might... Well, we'll just have to see. Because this, this car is going to sit pretty low to the ground um, for what I want. But that is absolutely awesome. I'm well chuffed with that. So that's, that's day one over. Um, I've, eight, I've actually started this about half past ten. And um, I think it's 6pm now. And I've hardly stopped. But such an enjoyable build. It really is. And as you can see, it's absolute. Oh, I've got to trim that. That's a bit of a bodge glen. Got to trim that off with a knife. But um, yeah, it's absolutely gorgeous. I'll put the battery holder in there as well. Just because I got those parts out. But um, yeah, next up, there's probably some more bits to add to it. I'm not too sure what just yet. There's that rear bumper that's got to go on. Um, and then obviously we've got to get the um, electrics in. So we've got to get the servo mounts in, the servo arm in, get a servo in, get the speed controller in and get it all powered up and make sure it's working. But um, I think in the morning, what we'll do first job, we'll dig the wheels and tires out um, and just fit them and just see how, just see how it's looking with the wheels and tyres on because it's going to look much better do you know what I'll, I'll do that right now and Mr Regress is better with tyres on that looks so much better now um, all the camber and well not so much camber but the towings way out on the front which is a bit odd um, back doesn't look too bad let's cock on actually um yeah there's there's going to be a lot of work involved getting the stance of this car correct because obviously you can see the height it's got which is just ridiculous when i when i'm running it it kind of wants to be probably around about there um which will bring its own problems um but it'll have enough shock on the back but when it's running what did i say to about there then yeah it's not gonna have a great deal on the front but we'll see, I mean, it's different when you get the shell on, but I think you can probably appreciate the the, the clearance it's got at the moment. That's just insane. I can get my full hand underneath that. Obviously they are sat a little bit high. So yeah, there's gonna be a lot of work with these shocks because these rears are gonna need spacers putting in. Um, so obviously drain the oil and what have you um, and sort of have it sat round about there. But I really need to get the ride height sorted. The front, I think the front will get away with. I don't think we'll have to put spacers in them. It's just the backs to get that back sunk low. And then once we've got that ride height, then we'll alter the, um, in fact, we'll have to alter all four cambers and we'll have to sort that um, toe in and toe out on the front. 
because um, that's shocking. That steering's absolute smooth. Oh, look at those at the angle of them shocks. Right, that's definitely it for tonight. Oh, what one last thing? The um, the diffs feel feel really good to be fair. And if we hold that down, the overall drive. It's a real that mount that motor that BZ is uh, it's got some really strong magnets. But um, yeah, that's a that's a cracking day's work. That to be fair. Right, so as I say, we'll get back to it in the morning. Right, day two. So I had a thought about it last night um, because earlier I said I was just going to leave these shocks on. Um, but what I've decided to do, because at the end of this video, I want this 100% ready to run as soon as the shell turns up for it. Um, so I don't want to give myself extra work. Um, and I do want the new high caps on this car with the, at the correct lengths. So I've dug all the, the shock build out of, out of the kit. Now, if you've never put spacers in shocks, um, that's that's the spacer there, this, this tube here and that actually goes on the inside of your shock so as you've built your, your your piston up you if you've got your pin you put that spacer over it and then put it in and obviously instead of the full piston going all the way down to there it whatever level of spacer say so let's say we put like eight mil in that piston will stop there so it's in it so it gives you the advantage of maybe the shock's that long as standard but when you can take it to that as standard so it's a bit of messing around, but um, for me, it's got to be done. Um, these cars need to run low, especially the way I'm running them. Um, it's not going to be mega low. It's not going to be like the top force was, but it's going to be a lot lower than um, it's sitting there. So my idea is, because I've got these, I can make these up and have a play with them without putting oil in them and, and everything. Um, so we'll make a rear up. I've got, I need to measure on the chassis now how much from all the way up until I took until, until I compress it to where I want it to be and I need to measure that uh, or sort of best educated guess I can make on it I think it's going to be around about 10 mil it could even be more looking at this bracket here I'd say that's difficult to say but I'm going to say that's around 7 mil maybe maybe 8 mil long so I don't think one of those is going to be enough but I do have these other trees from various other shocks that I've had and some of those come with a couple of spacer options so I'm going to dig those out because I know it's going to be a minimum of 10 mil so the idea is I'll get one I'll get one of these new rears to the length I'm happy with and then we'll match it then we'll take one off so you can see the full effect so let's talk let's crack on right so I've set one shock up how I want it now remember this is just something I do I'm not telling you guys to do this I like to run my cars pretty low to the ground because of the kind of type of running I do. So what I've done is on the left hand rear, that's the new shock with the spacers in and you can see the difference. Now although it does look incredibly dramatic, when this car was sat down with the correct length shocks, you would probably lose, you'd pro it'd probably go to there with the weight of the car anyway. So it's not quite as dramatic as you think. Um, so there's no oil in this one yet, but movement wise obviously very limited. But you're still, you're still getting enough for what I need. So what I did was I ended up using one of the um, egress spacers which came in the kit. But I also ended up adding, a, I tried two of them but that was too much. So I've added that one to it. So if I can just put them together you're going to see. So that's how much I'm dropping the rears. I'll show you the rear piston. So let's put them on the piston and then you'll see it better. So that's how much movement I'm losing. Which is a hell of a lot. But again, you know, don't do what I do. But when you see this car finished and it's sat and it's looking really badass low to the ground, you'll understand why. Obviously I don't race, I don't do massive jumps or anything, so all that suspension travel is not needed and uh, it, it just allows me to have more fun for what I do. So you get the idea now, what I'll do is I'm going to build the second rear shock up and then I'll whiz this one off that I've done 
and we'll get um, the oil into it and then we'll come back and see how that's sitting with the rear end and then we'll have to figure out if we need to do anything with those front shocks. Okay, I finally got it where I'm happy with it. Um, that took a lot of work to be fair. So obviously as you know we did the back end and we did that spacing of probably close to 12 mil, probably, probably more. So I put built the new front shocks up uh, and I put them on but I'm guessing, obviously, I've not checked these since I got them. So I don't know what piston setting they've got in them. And I don't, I've not checked the oil, but they're, um, the newer ones are better. So what I did was to stop droop, I had to put spacers in the front as well. Because obviously if I didn't, if I lifted that up, then the weight of the wheels would have um, given me a lot of droop on the front end. Um, so now that's how it's actually sat. Um, I've, I've increased the tension rate. Um, I've just made it a little bit harder, but um, all in all, yeah, really, really good. And just, it feels feels good. Obviously, I know it's not as good as it should be. I understand that, but just bear in mind how I run them and where I run them. Um, and, and more importantly, I've got to be blatantly honest, it's more about looks for me, because once we get all the bodywork on this thing and it's so low to the ground with the TRF white dish wheels and that, superb custom paint job this thing is gonna look superb so i also got the um wheels the camber i've the back end i've left i'm reasonably happy with that the camber was um wrong after i'd altered those shocks so i've, I've, I've spent 20 minutes sorting each camber link out to adjust the same and then obviously we did the towing um it was towing uh what was it it was towing in in badly so i've probably got it around about the, the zero mark but um yeah as i say that that thing is ready to go now that look it that looks superb it's got a little bit of rake going on um which but i believe all buggies should have a, a small amount of rake that's obviously angled downwards from the back to the front but um yeah overall and you do, you do lose a lot of suspension travel, but the, the travel you've you've lost is never used, in, in my opinion. Again, I'm sure you racers out there will tell me. But um, yeah, the, that, anyway. So next step now, that is the chassis 100% finished. So now what I need to do is dig a servo mount out get, and dig my radio, get the radio gear out. We'll just set it up, neutralize the servo, and um, let's get this steering and well, let's get the electrics in it. Okay, so I've got all the electrics connected up um, to make sure everything's working, um, which it is. So that's the steering server I've gone for, which is a, a Tactic TS X40 Metal Gear. Um, I'll let you hear it. I think it's fast enough. It'll be fast enough for what I do. And then I've just set the speedo up just on the throttle um, so you can hear it. I'll hold the steering. So we've got forward and brake and reverse. That's reverse. And then forward. So that, my friends, is good to go. So what obviously we'll do now is just get the servo into the car um, with it being centralized. Um, and then we'll, we'll, we'll make the connections and then we'll get the rest of the stuff in. Right, that's the um, servo server made up, obviously just kit one, um, and the servo blocks mount are on there, so that's just ready to go in. Also made the um, servo arm up um, to the correct length, and I've dug the screws out, so it's just now a case of um, bolting it down and connecting it to the chassis. And that's the chassis finished. Really happy with that, really happy. Steering's really sharp, servos cock on for it. Um, I'll turn that round and show you wiring. Tidy wiring's never my strongest point, but it's not too bad and everything's out of the way. Got my battery wire running along here, so that's going to sit quite nicely. Um, so as I say, it's not the neatest, but it's all out of the way. The switch is back here, but I'll probably just leave that switched on to be fair. Um, it would be nice, obviously, if I had the body shell. Just to make sure that this wiring is going to be okay. I mean, there's, there's plenty of give in it, but um, you don't really know until you get your shell on. 
Um, a lot of extra weight in it now. Feels kind of heavy, but the, that suspension setup's cock on. It's not sagging any, and uh, there's plenty of rebound or whatever you call it for it to come back up. So yeah, very overall very happy with that. That's turned out. How good does the Egress chassis look as well? It's a seriously badass car. Right, so I thought I'd just show you it sort of all working um, because obviously we're not going to be able to run it until the shell comes. So that servo, as I said, is really quick. That's really good. I didn't realise it was a quick servo. I just thought it was a little bit more powerful. I've set my steer steering trim as well. And uh, forwards. That thing looks to me like it's gonna shift. Well guys, that was absolutely awesome. Um, I can't get across how much I enjoyed that build. Um, absolutely superb. Um, from start to finish, diffs are never my favorite part. Um, but I had to say, cause they're a little bit different, um, I found it, I found those quite interesting as well. Um, but what a gorgeous car. I mean, don't even need a shell, does it? Such such an iconic car, it's unreal. Um, and obviously I've been blasting the battery through it, the car's not run itself. But I can feel the diffs now, they're, just, they're, not, they're not so much freer, but the, the, you can feel the smoother. Feel really nice, actually. Um, and that, as I say, that steering servo, that's, that's a bonus. I didn't realise I had a servo that quick, which is ideal for this car. Yeah, it's a, it's a thing of beauty. Um, don't get confused by what I've done with the shocks. Um, this is something I've always done. It was more for the display purposes when I used to have the glass IKEA cabinets and maybe you'd have an egress and even um, an egress roller with its standard settings. It's probably sat off the ground about an inch, you know, and it's too much. It just doesn't look correct. So even for the show purposes, I used to put washers on the insides of the shock bodies just to bring it right down to how I would have it running, which was basically as low as I could. And it did just look awesome. But then when I got the top force, I did the same in that because that had a, a quite a crazy ride height. And even with all the adjustments from the shock towers on the arms, you still couldn't get it really low. So I did the same with them and then that's just when I just found it, you know, low to ground for tarmac running and stuff. It just it was just more fun and, and they seem to handle way better, just my opinion. Um and as I say on the groups, I see lots of guys running buggies with um very sort of minimal uh, ground clearance. But I mean it's not like it's not there. It's still probably I know the undertrace to go on, but still probably got about 13, 14 mil there. Um, so if you can imagine if I hadn't done that it's set up here so yeah if you're unsure about that just wait until you see this thing when it's got its body shell on and the wings in the correct position and, and all that this thing is gonna look totally badass so that's as far as I can go with this right now which is a bit unfortunate because as I say I'm not gonna do the kit body shell for it in box art just yet I want to as soon as that other body arrives then I'll get in. I'll go into my TRF 503 new inbox kit. I'm going to whip the TRF big bar damper set out of them. We'll make them up. At least now we can make them to this size as well, which is a lot easier for me. So we'll make them to that. Swap it straight over so it's got those. Um, TRF, I call them TRF, the white dished wheels, but you know which ones I mean with the dual block tyres. So we'll have those, so the wheels will be white, those beautiful shocks, and then this really in your face body, which I've got some um, TRF decals for as well. So we'll get all that done. And then we'll actually get it out and uh, rip it around, and I, I really am excited about this one. I really am. It just, I just think it's gonna be absolutely awesome. I just know it is. It's just, it's one of them where as soon as I start driving it, there's going to be no disappointment thinking, oh, I thought it might be better, or I thought it might do this. It ain't going to happen. This thing is going to be absolutely awesome. 
Um, and then we've got we've got cool things we can do with it. Um, first of all, we've got the one-way torque splitter that we didn't fit. You know, it's not a massive job to take this out and fit and fit that. And then go do a couple of batteries with that to see what the differences are. See if I notice a difference. Um, and then obviously we've got to do the um, the box art body. But I'm kind of going to do that when I finish with running it. Um, so I keep it mint and then we'll probably go to the box art with the high caps back on. Um, and then it'll go on the shelf because this is, this is one for me. This is my car. This is not going anywhere. Um, such a beautiful car. Anyway, I've uh, I've dribbled on enough. I don't know how long this video has been, but if it's been too long. In fact, if anyone's still watching, let me know what you think to these sort of Saturday videos I've been putting out for the last three or four weeks, whatever it is. I've tended to, I'm posting less during the week and doing a bigger video on a Saturday, because that's what a lot of you guys ask for. Um, but if I start seeing in the comments, oh, it's far too long then. So let me know what you think. As I said, I don't even know how long this video is. Anyway guys, thanks so much for watching, it's really appreciated. If you are new to this channel, if you could please consider liking and subscribing to support us. And if you do that, smash that notification buzzer for our weekly videos. And as always guys, happy seeing.